Hello and welcome to Padstow Baptist Church service today. My name is Jamie and I'm so glad to have you here join us. So I'm just going to pray for us before we head into this time of worship um, and praise to God. Um, so let's pray together, shall we? Lord Jesus, we are so thankful for your uh, abundant grace and abundant love towards us. We know that you have worked out everything in your plan and and God, as, as you see fit, um, we just ask that you let us join in on that journey with you. Um, there are so many good things happening amongst all of the bad things, and we're so aware of that. Um, but God, we just ask that you join with us um, in this celebration of who you are. Um, as we praise together, as we learn about who you are and your character, we ask that you bless us with, with your healing spirit and your anointing over our lives. And we ask that you enrich us today um, so that we can see and learn more about you. Um, in your precious name we pray. Amen. Let's head into a time of worship.
give you love Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head oh, I will sing of the goodness of God
hello again. Uh, this time of the service is when we would enjoy story time, so I'm gonna uh, hit us up with quite a good story today. Um, earlier this week, Jake, Corey, and myself moved into a new house. Um, we were very excited and a bit shocked about how quickly everything uh, happened in that process. We figured we were gonna look for a couple of months and then maybe find something and apply somewhere and, you know, get denied a couple times and then we'd we'd get a house but you know the second house we looked at uh, got approved within three hours and we totally uh, believe that that's under the Lord's blessing um, and then the worry set in for all of us about how do we furnish this house because we can't just take things from our own homes where our families live um, and then piece by piece uh, every piece of furniture in our house has been provided by God um, in such an incredible way um, one of Corey's friends um, lives next to a house where they got a washing machine, a dryer, a microwave and a vacuum cleaner all in this one house um, and Corey just happened to be in the right place at the right time um, where the landlord of that house said who needs to, who, who do you know that needs this stuff and Corey said I need that stuff um, so we got all of those things um, a couple of other friends of ours were getting rid of their fridge, so we, we had a fridge. I knew a family that were getting rid of their lounge, and they asked me, hey, you work in a church, do you know anyone that needs a lounge? And I was like, I, I need a lounge. Um, a lady came into our op shop at the church and had a table and some chairs, and Trudy grabbed me up and said, hey, I've got uh, a table and some chairs for you if you want that. And that was just, you know, everything on our list that we thought, uh, you know, we're going to have to spend some money getting this stuff God just provided in such a healthy way um, and it wasn't all at once and it it was just piece by piece at the right time hi everyone how are you going today we're going to be talking about how Jesus is the way maker he has made a way for us to be friends with God forever and ever and ever and we know it because we've heard about it in so many ways we've heard about it in the Old Testament Jesus made a way for Noah and his family to be safe. He made a way for Daniel to be safe from the lions in the lion's den. He made a way for Moses and the Israelites to get across the Red Sea. He made a way for Hannah to have a baby. He made a way for Esther to um, be able to go and speak to her husband, even though that wasn't the normal thing that women could do at the time. Jesus makes the way for us to God and God makes a way for us to live our best lives. And today we're going to watch a video about how Jesus caused Matthew to become one of his disciples. Now Matthew was a guy who was having some trouble. He was a tax collector. People didn't like him that much. Um, and, and people called him a sinner. And we all are. We all do the wrong thing. And like Matthew, Jesus calls us into relationship with him. Like Matthew, we've done the wrong thing and we need Jesus to forgive us. Like Matthew... We need God to make a way so that we can live for him. And the video that we watched actually talks about that. Right at the end, it talks about how Matthew lived his whole life for God and serving God. And that's because Jesus made a way. He died on the cross. He rose again. He invites us in to be his friends. And when we have him in our life, when the Holy Spirit comes and lives in us, he helps us to make wise choices. He helps us to be loving and kind. He helps us know great ways to serve God and to love people. And so Jesus is our way maker, just like he's been the way maker for so many, so many people before us. So enjoy the video and think about how Jesus can be making the way for you in your own life to live your best life. Stories of the Bible. Jesus calls Matthew. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. Jesus was in Capernaum and he was walking along when he saw a tax collector named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Tax collectors were hated by everyone because many people thought they were cheaters and sinners. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Ugh, let's get out of here. But Jesus saw this man and said, follow me and be my disciple. Me? Yeah, you. So Matthew got up, left everything, and followed him. Later, Matthew held a banquet in his home hey, yes. with Jesus as the guest of honor. Uh, you to here. Oh, thank you. Many of Matthew's fellow tax collectors and other guests also ate with them. Ugh, yuck. Hey, you! But the Pharisees and their teachers of religious law complained to Jesus' disciples, Why do you eat and drink with such scum? Ah, uh, hold on there. When Jesus heard this, he told them, Healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. Then he added, Now go on and learn the meaning of this scripture. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. For I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. So Matthew went on to be one of Jesus' 12 disciples and followed him throughout his time on earth. He even wrote a book in the Bible about Jesus' time on earth, and he served God for the rest of his life. Hi everyone, um, I'm doing the announcements today in place of Lisa. Uh, we're trying to give her just a, a nice little week off uh, from doing that job. So here am I. Happy birthday to everyone that had a birthday this week. Um, we wish you all the best for um, that day. Hope you had a good time. Community Care is, uh, still has the winter appeal going on and uh, you can help people who are in need during this time. It'll be continuing throughout August. Um, they'll be getting blankets, hampers, counselling, all sorts of things that people need during this season. So please go to the Community Care website if you want to make a donation to that, or you can uh, do it through your offering as well. Um, church is online this week, obviously, because we're online right now. Um, stay tuned for more information uh, with Anne uh, shortly about resuming in-person services. It won't be uh, just yet. Uh, as far as giving your offering, there's a few different ways that you can do it. There's direct deposit. The details are there on the screen behind me or in your bulletins. Um, they can also be found on the website. Or um, if you're at home and you don't have any way of uh, getting your normal offering to us, just let us know and we can come and pick it up for you. Or you can drop them into Food and Life or Renew stores. Or there's another option which is text, uh, text to give, which means you can just use your phone and you can just... Uh, text the word give to that number and follow the prompts, it will set it all up for you. And then after you've done that, all you have to do is text the number. So you could just text 20 and it will donate $20 for instance. And it's a really easy way to do it as well. I'm just gonna pray now and give thanks for the offerings. Father God, we just thank you uh, that you look after us. We thank you that you um, are constantly on our side and in our corner. And we just want to thank you for um, the blessings that you've given us in this country. We thank you for our health system and the way that, uh, that our authorities are dealing with things. And uh, we just want to thank you for the way that you've provided for us. And we want to in turn um, hand it back to you for your ministry and your things. And so we just want to commit that to you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks very much, everyone. Hi, everyone. Have you got your accessories? I just thought I'd wear it because it's pretty and we're all adjusting right to changes new changes every week and I hope you're going okay um, you'll know by now that we're not back at church obviously we really miss you guys and we're looking forward to when that will happen but until it does we just really want to encourage you to try and think of ways to keep connection so this week's challenge for everyone our COVID challenge is to call someone different I'm sure you've been kept keeping in contact with your friends um, and your family, but call someone different from our community. Send a card, invite someone around to do church with you on Sunday morning or Sunday night, or um, have someone around for lunch or a coffee. Whatever you feel comfortable with, but we really want to encourage you to um, be creative in how you continue to find ways to stay connected and be in community um, 
for us all to be in community together. And um, remember that we're praying for you. And I know you guys are praying for everyone as well. So um, we just want to remind you that God has got it. God's with us. That nothing can separate us from him and his love. And um, that community continues even though it looks different in different ways. We're excited that Connect Groups are still meeting. We're excited that we're hearing stories of... Um, you know, nice ways that you're staying in contact together. Thanks, everyone. John chapter 14, verse 5 to 7. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you will know my father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 to 9 For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Well, thank you, Jeremy, for reading for us today. Uh, over the next few weeks, we're going to explore some aspects of the person of Jesus. We've been singing a song recently called Waymaker, and it kind of highlights some of the great pictures that illustrate some of the aspects of who Jesus is. And the chorus of that song says that he is the waymaker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper, and light in the darkness. And today I want to look at Jesus as the waymaker. Jesus wasn't uh, coming simply to free people of his day from Roman oppression. Jesus came to free the people from a much, much bigger and more insidious problem. The problem of sin. You see, Jesus, his mission was to come and die for us. And in scripture we see these uh, last minute conversations that Jesus has with his guys and he's trying to teach them things. He's been trying to teach the disciples that he was soon going to heaven to be with the Father. And he knew that his time had almost come. But the disciples, his followers, they weren't kind of they weren't fully sure about what was happening or how to also be with God in heaven at that stage. And in one moment in John chapter 14 that uh, Jeremy read so beautifully, um, Jesus answers Thomas's question of how and where do we go to? How do we get there? And in John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We live in a society which it, in which it says there's actually lots of ways to get to Jesus. Lots of ways to get to God, sorry. But Jesus himself says the opposite. There is only one way, and that is directly through Jesus Christ, and his death and resurrection. In other words, he is the way maker. He is the only one. And uh, right throughout the Old Testament, we see God was at work walking with his people too. And he was giving them a way out of Egypt. He was giving them a way through the desert. And he was giving them a way into the promised land. And I want to talk about those three aspects of Jesus being the way maker. I want to talk about Jesus being the way out. Jesus being the way through, and Jesus being the way in. And so this is what Jesus is to us. And let's just start with the first one. Because Jesus is the way out, it means I actually have help in this life. Now I don't know if you've ever done uh, one of those escape rooms. There's a thing called an escape room. Um, Maybe some of you uh, older members of the congregation wouldn't have heard of this, but all of our young people have heard of this. And basically it's like uh, you, you pay a, a little bit of a fee and you and your family or you and your friends can go and be locked in this room. Sounds great, doesn't it? Locked in the room, but the room is uh, made so that there's a whole lot of puzzles that you have to solve to get out of the room. In other words, you might have to do combinations, or you might have to um, look at the picture puzzles that are on the walls uh, and work out how to get the next clue open and when the next clue will open and it might be a secret door will open or a, a box will open or a key will drop or it could be a, any a host of different things but you're just you're trying 
to get out of this room. And it's a lot of fun, it's, it's high energy and it's a little bit frantic. And to be honest, I've done a couple and I've been this close to getting out of all of them and never got out. Um, not the right way anyway. We, we got out when the guy came to rescue us. But maybe, um, maybe where you're at in life, you're just trying to find a way just to get out. And I think maybe that's how a lot of the world feels right now. We, we've just come from a time when there have been restrictions and limitations and we, in, in those times we actually just want to get out of them and go back to normal. Anyone here uh, want to get back to normal yet? Yeah. Think back just a few months ago when we were in stage 3 restrictions in New South Wales and people were juggling, uh, working from home while they're trying to school their kids and it's just chaos. And I don't know about you, but did anyone just feel like you wanted to get out? Get out and back to normal? And we're sitting there and going, what's the code? What's the combination? We just want to get back to normal. Well, just as we have a fear of this virus that's out there, um, the truth is that our greatest issue is not what's outside, but what's actually on the inside. And God is trying to get us out of this uh, internal issue that's destroying us from the inside out. And it also spills out and, and it impacts uh, the people around us too. Paul was one of the great uh, heroes of the Bible, a Christian man filled with the Spirit, and yet he struggled internally. And in Romans chapter 7, we, we see some of these things uh, popping out in, in his writings. And he says this, For I know that good itself does not dwell in me, that's in my sinful nature. For I have the desire not to do what is good, but I, I have, sorry, for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep doing. And then he says, what a wretched man I am. And so he's kind of saying, I want to honour God, I want to do what's right, but I just can't do it out of will, willpower. I can't do it under my own strength. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are, are Rocky fans. There was a whole lot of Rocky movies out when I was a, a kid and about uh, Sylvester Stallone uh, playing a boxer that's kind of the underdog. And, uh, and he you know, obviously wins, otherwise there wouldn't be much point to the movies, would there? But there's a, there's, a, there's a whole new series of Rocky movies, although they're not called Rocky, they're called um, Creed now. And uh, in, in these movies, Creed, you've got Rocky as the trainer, and he's training one of Rocky's ex-opponents, sons, on how to fight. And there's this scene in, in one of those movies where he actually is he's training the guy, and he brings him over, and he stands him in front of a mirror, and he points to the, his own reflection in the mirror, and he says... Mate, you see this guy here? He is the toughest opponent you are ever going to face. And, you know, there's not a lot of brilliant uh, dialogue in Rocky movies, but that's, that's a, pretty, uh, a pretty good statement. I think that's the truth in the ring, and maybe it's true in life as well. Our greatest enemy is not a, a virus that's on the outside. Our greatest enemy is actually our sinful hearts on the inside. And the Apostle Paul was saying that this is the wrestle he was going through. And some of you are probably feeling this right now as you live out in this season that you notice some things on the inside are starting to pop out under the pressure. And now I'm having everyone pretty much that I ring up and say, how are you going? They're, they're, they're saying to me that they're actually struggling with some things under, under the whole COVID thing. COVID-19 is shining a bright light on our issues. Now, maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that's God bringing to the surface some things that need to be dealt with. Maybe he's revealing things because he wants to get you up and out of those things. We love Jesus and Jesus gives us help to get out of those things. Watch what Paul says in Romans 7.25. He says, who will rescue me? from this body that is subject to death. And then he says, Thanks be to God, who delivers me through Christ Jesus our Lord. And so do you, do you see that the way out is through Jesus? Because sin is so much more destructive than COVID-19. Yes, COVID-19 is a difficulty. 
but sin in the, in the, in the whole wash up of this world is the biggest problem. You see it playing out in, in countries at the moment. You see it playing out in politics in America, especially at the moment. You see it playing out in uh, American society at the moment. You see it playing out in our own um, place here in Australia with people sneaking into other states. But there is great news today for the problem of sin. And that is that we have a cure. God has given us a way out. He's given us a way out of the destruction and he is the way out. Jesus is the way maker. And some of you are maybe wondering right now, how do I get out of darkness? How do I get out of fear? How do I get out of grief or, or shame? How do I get out of this toxic relationship? How do I get out of this thing that has a hold over my life? Well, are you ready? The good news is that Jesus is the way out. Because money can't get you out. Drugs can't get you out. A holiday can't get you out. Drinking can't get you out. More online shopping can't get you out. Sorry to disappoint some of you guys. Nothing can bring the peace of God in your life except for Jesus. 2 Corinthians 1.10 says, He has delivered us from such a deadly peril and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope and he will continue to deliver us. And now this was written when Paul, the Apostle Paul was in one of his most discouraging seasons in his life. And he says, he has delivered. He will deliver us again and he will continue to deliver us. And I think maybe we need to sit with that for a few moments today. He has done it, he will do it, and he will continue to do it. So Jesus is the way out. Number two, because Jesus is our way through, we have hope. Now, Isaiah 43, 1 to 3 says this, Do not fear, for I've redeemed you. I've summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel your saviour. Now notice it doesn't say if you go through the fire. It doesn't say if you go through the rivers. It doesn't say if you go through the flames. He says when. And he says when you do I'll be with you. So listen to this closely. You have never been alone. Jesus is walking with you. Whatever you do wherever you are going right now. Because Jesus is the way through, not just to give you what, you what you want in everything, but to give you hope in every situation. You know, I don't think any of us want to go through uh, what we're going through now, right now. I know our friends in Victoria don't want to go through this. I know I want to be back in church together. I want to be able to hang out with you guys. I want to be able to sing and hug and uh, shake hands and do all those normal things. But I'm thankful that in this season, even though I'm not getting what I want, Jesus is giving me what I need. That's good, isn't it? That even though I'm not getting what I want, Jesus is giving me what I need. Because he is the way maker and he carries us through the issues, through the trials, through the storms. That's the second point. The third point is because Jesus is the way in, he's given us a home with him in heaven. Have a look at Ephesians chapter 1 verses 4 and 5. It says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. Now, just stop for a minute and hear those verses with, with ears as if you were hearing it for the first time. As if you were hearing it and believing it is what God is saying over us. In, a, in other words, when we hear that passage, before you were even here on this planet, he chose us to be his sons and his daughters. Before you had time to muck it up or, or cause damage or carnage in your life, he chose you 
to be allowed to be saved. Think about those things you do or think that makes you feel unworthy of Jesus' love. And remember this, before the creation of the world, he chose you to be holy and blameless. Before you were even a thought in your parents' mind, God says, I love you. This was what he wanted to do. It wasn't like he said, oh well, I guess I better make a way. They've really mucked it up now. No, from the beginning, from the very beginning, before you even were a thought in your parents' mind, God wanted you. Remember back in school days when they uh, used to, you know, you'd be playing footy or whatever or netball or you know, whatever the sport was in the, in the um, playground and they'd pick a team. Have you ever been in that situation? I picked so-and-so, okay, you pick them, I pick them. Ever been the last one picked? I can remember being uh, almost the last one picked because I was always a little bit small and um, that wasn't helpful when you're playing footy. And it's kind of like in those circumstances, it feels like, well, they don't even want me. Well, I'm here to tell you today that Jesus wants you. He chose you. And it actually gave him pleasure to choose you. That's pretty awesome. If you've uh, ever had kids, uh, particularly uh, you women, after the pain of delivery, there's this moment wonder and joy and all the nurses seem to just fade into the background and leave the room with, and they kind of plop the baby uh, up, on, up in your arms and there's this beautiful moment of peace and, uh, and joy but now they're in the family and because of what Jesus has done we are in the family just like that little baby becomes part of our family we are in God's family. There is nothing we can do to earn physical birth. Your parents chose to have you. Well, God chose you to be in his home through Jesus Christ as well. See, if it came down to just me, then I've got no hope. I can't make it. I am not good enough. But salvation, that place in heaven, that place with God, is not earned, it is received. It's a gift from God through Jesus Christ. He makes the way. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 says, For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is a gift from God, not by work so that no one can boast. God has saved you if you've accepted we can't do it. You know, we used to go on holidays regularly down the south coast um, and there's a place down there called Funland. Um, I can't think of the, the suburb right right this uh, moment, but it's like a, a games arcade and our kids would love it. There was dodging cars and there was all these um, arcade machines where you'd, you'd, you'd play the game and you'd receive a whole lot of um, tickets. And... You know, at the end of the, the time that you were at Funland, you'd have this big pile of tickets and then you'd go over to the counter and you could, you could um, purchase things with the tickets. And now they're pretty rubbishy things, but it, it just seemed very exciting when you were down on school holidays um, down there. And, and my kids used to love that. But imagine if you took all those tickets, just say you won, you won a, a, a major prize down at Funland, you walked out the front doors of Funland, you went down the road a little bit, down to the, the nearest um, car yard, and you take all your thousands of tickets, and you walk in and you say, I'm going to have that Mercedes, thank you. And they say, beautiful, come down and we'll sign the paperwork and we'll, we'll get it started. And when you go down there and you, say, you hand them all these, this big pile of tickets and you put it on the, on the desk, that guy's going to think you're absolutely crazy that you think you can buy a car using Funland tickets. They have zero value in a car yard. And just like that, our works, our good deeds, have zero value when it comes to trying to impress God. The things we do can't buy salvation. You can't be good enough, you can't serve enough, you can't read enough Bible verses to make yourself right with God. 
Those things are useless unless Jesus makes a way for you. God the Father knew there was no solution, there was no way to get home to heaven, humanly speaking. That there's no way of having friendship with God if Jesus doesn't die in our place. If Jesus doesn't make a way. And that's pretty good news for us. Because it means if we are willing to do the ABCs, admit we are sinners, believe that Jesus died on the cross for us and confess him as Lord of our lives, then he will come in and make us born again. He will uh, make us like new. So I don't know if you've done that um, today. Maybe there's someone watching on today that, um, that hasn't really been to church before, but they've joined in with online church. Well, today I'd just like to offer, um, if, if you are feeling drawn to Jesus, if you, uh, some of the things that I've said today are making you think, well, I don't, I'm not sure that I'm saved. I'm not sure that I'll um, get into heaven when I die. I'm not sure that I have that r real life and peace that comes in Jesus. Well, I just want to uh, maybe lead you in a prayer um, together. And if you haven't done that and you'd like to do that, we would love to pray, pray with you. And we'd love to hear from you as well. So um, please, if, if that's you, make contact with us um, through the church website or um, just give us a call. love to hear from you that's the case but let me just pray and if you would like to pray this along with me uh, then please do let's pray Lord we are all sinners none of us make the cut we can't do it on our own and so we just want to acknowledge that Father that we are sinful we want to uh, confess uh, that you died on the cross for us we, we believe that and we want to confess that you uh, are the Lord of our lives. We want to invite you in to become the person in charge of our lives. So please come into our hearts today. Begin to make us more and more like you. And Father, I just pray that as you come in, you would fill us with your peace and your joy and the power of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, everybody. And uh, we'll hand back over for a, a little more time um, in worship. Bless you guys.
silo.